everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of a weekend reading vlog. First vlog with the new haircut. I've reached the point of quarantine, I guess, where I finally broke down and got bangs. But this reading weekend, I'm actually really, really looking forward to. I'm kind of going back to my roots a bit. I'm picking up a high fantasy novel I have been really interested in reading and is also really, really hyped. I've read some incredible sci-fi and dystopian but mostly sci-fi books over the past couple of weeks and I've just been itching to go back to fantasy and that's basically what I'm doing in this vlog and the book I'm picking up I don't know I'm looking forward to reading it I'm excited to share my thoughts and feelings with you guys and in general I'm looking forward to your thoughts and feelings too but without further ado let's chat about the two books I hope to read this weekend so the first book I'm gonna quickly touch on and it is the office of historical corrections by Danielle Evans this is a set of short stories and one novella um, and I'm actually currently reading this I've read two of the short stories and I'll probably read maybe one or two additional ones this weekend. This is just a book I started this past week and one I've been slowly reading. Um, but oh my gosh, this is so good so far. Obviously, I haven't read the whole thing, but the first two short stories I've read were excellent. I've heard really good things about the short story collection, which is why I was like, so, so excited to read it this month. So I'll probably read another one for this vlog and talk more about it uh, later on in this video. But I did want to shout that I am reading this and really, really liking it. And so far would definitely very much recommend. But the book I probably will read the bulk of for this video is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Imes. This is a very popular first book to a series and it basically follows a ragtag group of mercenaries that are all like past their prime, ready for retirement, um, but I think an event kind of brings the band back together and they go out on a bit of an adventure together. I'm hoping this is just like character led, funny, but lots of camaraderie and just like classic quest, boys are back in town, like good time fantasy book. So this is the book I'm probably going to read the bulk of this weekend and I'm just looking forward to it just because I know how popular it is and I'm excited to, I don't know, see what I think and start a whole new fantasy series. But these are the two books I am reading this weekend this which i've already started and i'm really really liking um and this which i'm looking forward to picking up and seeing what i think but it is already like past seven o'clock on this friday i just wrapped up work clay has a bit more work to do he's on just a, a project that is uh keeping him late but i probably should figure out what to eat for dinner but i don't feel like thinking <laughs> Um, so I think I'm just gonna make like a comfort food, eat that, and then deal with dinner at a later point tonight. Um, but all I do know is I really want to watch the newest episode of WandaVision with Clay. But in the meantime, I think I am gonna make a snack and maybe watch a K-drama. I'm not sure, but I'll let you know when I figure it out. So it's 7.30 on a Friday and I'm making s'mores. Guys, this is when you shouldn't go and check your work email while you're making oven s'mores. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I can't believe how badly I screwed that up. <laughs> so what happens when you check your work email and then take a work call like late on a Friday evening, you just get thrown off, you forget about the s'mores. Disaster, it's like, getting late. Clay and I need to figure out dinner, but I think I'm going to try to decompress from this evening, from this chaotic start of this Friday evening, um, by reading. I think I'm going to pick up ooh, Kings of the Wild and just try to read like 10, 15 pages and just get settled into the world. Again, I'm really looking forward to this. I probably hope, probably hope, I plan to read hopefully quite a bit this weekend. Um, so, might as well get started. I've opted to make a bit, oh my gosh, I'm not very strong, pivot. Why oh, is it so difficult? Anyway, um, to a cider. Um, post burning my s'mores, and I'm gonna go lay in bed and start my book. Getting my Friday night officially started. So we got Venezuelan food tonight, and it looks so good. Also, I read 40 pages of my book just now, and it's starting out exactly as I was hoping it to, but I'm gonna focus on dinner. Hi friends, so Clay and I ate dinner, and then we watched two episodes of a new like episodic, kind of peaceful anime we're watching, 
And now it's time for bed, to be honest. It's early-ish. Uh, we're both going to do some reading. I think we just had long days and we're like, let's just get a good night's sleep is kind of the vibe. Um, but as I said, I actually started Kings of the Wild already. And I've read 40 pages and I'm going to read a bit more. But I'm like... I'm obviously not very far in, but kind of the vibe I was hoping for this book would give me is definitely delivering. It opens with our main character, Clay, who, as I mentioned, is... Wow. But anyway, Clay is a retired um, mercenary, and he was, once, <laughs> he was once a part of this very famous, like, band of warriors who had saved the day, who's gone on all of these quests that are now famous, like, bards have made songs about them. Um, but they're all very much past their prime. They've all settled down into new lives until one, until the old leader Gabriel shows up on Clay's doorstep and is like, I gotta go save my daughter. Like she went out questing and I'm concerned because like a battle went wrong and he's like, I feel like we've got to get the band back together to save her. Um, so far, there's great humor. I enjoy the dialogue. Like, I feel like the story is going to be dark. Like there's going to be a lot of combat. But it has this lightness to it and almost this like wink wink style as well like it almost feels like a like a dungeons and dragons like quest you know or like the references to all the past quests it's like so classic and so fun like there's just so many elements to this that it just scream like classic fun fantasy and we're you know we're going on a new one and we're gonna go face a bunch of bad guys and and hurdles and all all these different things along the way and I'm really looking forward to it. So I think it's just gonna be like a really good mashup. Almost like road trip novel meets fantasy, chaos, Dungeons and Dragons quest situation. I don't know, again, I've only read 40 pages, but the vibes are definitely there. And I'm glad like the stylization of the story itself seems to be kind of what I was hoping it would be, but obviously TBD, but I'm gonna do more reading now. Good morning, everyone. In the process of doing my morning skincare lols letting it sink in um but cheers we got a whole look going on right now but but i was able to read 70 pages last night which is really exciting and i plan to do more reading today the book is fun it has a lot of humor and action i wouldn't say i feel like it's not going to be like the deepest character-led story like it's going to be possibly just kind of more of like a good time which i don't really mind i could also be wrong um again because i've only read 70 pages but i'm really looking forward to reading more but in the meantime i'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee and get ready to film so i'm gonna film a video this morning and then take on the rest of the day it's sunny today which feels amazing <laughs> like even if it's freezing, at least there's sun. Just finished filming and moved all of Matilda's blankets back. I was actually a non, like, I didn't have to show any books off in the videos, so easy cleanup, you know what I mean? Hi guys, so I'm currently importing my video footage now, so I thought I would take a second to do a bit of an unboxing haul with ThreadUp for you guys. So as you guys know, I have been shopping on ThreadUp for many, many years. I'm a huge fan and they are actually sponsoring this video. I'm always thrilled to be working with them because I always get the cutest, cutest stuff off their site. But if you're not familiar, ThreadUp is essentially the largest online thrift store. They have thousands upon thousands of gently worn and honestly like new items on their site available to shop from so many of my favorite stores, Madewell, J. Crew, and other stories. The site itself is super easy to shop. You're able to search by store, but also by item type, color, fit, size. You can basically filter and easily find whatever it is you're currently in need of or looking for. And in general, I love shopping on ThreadUp, not only because it's so easy to shop and make sure I'm buying pieces that fit perfectly into my wardrobe, but it's also such an easy way to give clothes a second chance and a second life and also reduce overall clothing waste, which I think is amazing. I specifically wanted to call out a new section on their site, which I have discovered and I am in love with. And most of the items I'm actually going to show off are from this section. It's called revive with Rent the Runway. Essentially, you're able to purchase gently worn items from the Rent the Runway like renting service. This section is amazing because it's curated with all of these new season items. It's updated like every day with new stuff always coming in. And the items are from all of these amazing brands and it's so heavily discounted. I was able to score such amazing deals. I still cannot believe it. It's amazing. So I would definitely recommend checking out this particular section on their site if you haven't already. I have found the cutest stuff there. I of course have an offer code for you guys. If you use the code Reagan, you can save 30% off your first 
first order. And of course, I will have this as well as a URL down below if you're interested in learning more. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the items. And of course, everything comes beautifully wrapped like a present. I got such a good range of stuff kind of to help transition me into spring weather, which I cannot wait for it to warm up. Item prices themselves range. I have stuff in like the $15 range to the $20 range. Everything was a steal. So let's jump in. I'm going to start with the two items that aren't from the revive section. Um, and they're really, really cute. The first one is from Universal Thread, and it is this beautiful linen tiered mini dress. I absolutely love the color, and I grabbed this because I thought for now it would be incredible layered over a turtleneck. I'll show that in a cutaway, but obviously when the weather starts to warm up, this is a super breathable fabric, kind of like a classic and really flattering um, silhouette, and this color is just, just one I personally love. And then obviously the price was absolutely wild. I got this at about 50% off. It was originally $30 and I got it for $15. And I just feel like this is never going to go out of style and I just love it so much. And then the second item I got is from a brand called Wild Fable and it is this check cardigan. I just thought this was so cute. I love the sort of buffalo check. It's kind of a nice light midweight cardigan. So again, perfect for when the weather starts to warm up a bit. Obviously great because it can add a layer of warmth uh, at the moment, which we all generally need. Uh, plaid is always one of my go-to prints. This itself is incredibly soft and I just really think this is going to be great. Again, with like a turtleneck underneath or with a t-shirt. Like there's so many different ways to wear this and I just cannot wait to add this into my wardrobe. I think it's so much fun. This was originally $37 and I was able to get it for $16. So again, another like 50% off deal. So cute. The last non-revive item I got is also from Universal Thread. That's just one of my favorite brands. I think they make the cutest stuff. And it's this so cute like a uh, little high neck blouse with an eyelet detailing again and this beautiful like rust shade so I feel like this will work for a lot of different seasons but obviously with the eyelet detailing it's going to be wonderful for spring this was an amazing deal this was originally $25 and I got it for $12 <laughs> and I just think this is so excellent the cotton fabric again will be perfect for spring weather and it's just like a classic silhouette a classic detail and it honestly doesn't even look like it's been worn but yeah huge fan of this and then the last three things I got from the revive section they're all from different brands so I'll make sure to call those out the first one is from BB Dakota and it is this super cute yellow gingham top I mean how does this not just scream spring I love this so much this was also an incredible deal so this was originally $80 and I got it for $22 I'm telling you the revive section is where it's at but this is perfect it's slightly cropped it has an adorable button detailing and just like this pattern this yellow gingham print is so cute and it just caught my eye right away I love this and then the second item might be my favorite thing in the entire haul it's from this brand called Kara, which I've never actually heard of before, but this was also an incredible deal. But it is this adorable polka dot print dress. It has like an asymmetric hem and also has all of these different size polka dots throughout it, which I think just makes it look so interesting and fun. This will be perfect to layer with tights and a cardigan right now, but again, wearing it for the spring summer will be so easy too. It's just so cute and I think the polka dots make it really really classic this was a steal this was originally $150 and I got it for $39 um and I think it's silk I don't know it feels very fancy I can't wait to wear it I love this so so much and then the last item I have to show off is from a very fancy brand called Sundry who makes beautiful comfortable loungewear that I again got at the revive section it's this super cute color block sweater I love the sort of red pink maroon colorway I think it's so fun and bright and cheery to kind of get us through these last sad cold months but again will work so well with jeans and just like lighter spring weather I was so drawn to this color palette I was thrilled to find this at such a good discount but this guys was originally $178 and I got it for $35 on thread up and it's just 
so cute i mean even look at this like little cuff detailing i die so those are all the items i picked up from thread up for the spring season i cannot wait to wear them all of course again i'll have my offer code as well as my url linked down below big shout out again to thread up for sponsoring this video i absolutely love their site i love shopping on their site so it's always such a joy to work with them but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that bit of an unboxing but let's jump back in to the vlog finished importing my footage and look who's back the sleepiest girl in the world i love how nappy she gets after her hour-long walks with clay like she's asleep on her bone right now <laughs> also i changed into a sweatshirt because it's cold and i wanted to be comfortable but i left the jeans on which i feel like counts for something um, but yeah, Clay ran out to get some bagels and, uh, I've just been wrapping up some editing stuff, but I'm in a good spot and I think we're going to watch The Crown and just relax the rest of the afternoon. It's already gotten gloomy outside, so just perfect chilling weather, you know? Winter, man. It has, just makes me want to do nothing but watch TV. Bagel time and The Crown. All right, I'm heading out into the world, into the cold to run a quick errand with Clay. And then I refuse to do any more errands ever again. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like I need like four hours of motivation to make myself leave the house. Anyone else? But yeah, we're going to go run out. I'll bring you guys along. Show you some of the dirty snow piles that are all over New York City. And uh, let's head out. Out and about. Getting our steps in. Enjoying the dirty snow. We are back from errands. We picked up groceries for lunch for the work week, salads and sandwiches, and then stuff to make soup tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. But yeah, a little grocery haul. All right, now that errands are completed, I brewed a fresh pot of coffee and I'm actually gonna do some reading. Um, so I'm gonna do that now and then I'll do a bit of a reading update once I've read more pages. Hi friends, I wanted to do a reading check-in for Kings of the Wild. I've read 120 pages and I plan to read actually a bit more um, to get to about 150 before I break for the evening to hang out with Clay, but I'm really liking this book. It is definitely turning out to be what I was hoping it would be. It has a lot of humor. It has a lot of heart. Um, so far what I've read, it's really about Clay and Gabriel and all the people who are once part of this powerful and very famous mercenary group kind of getting the band back together. So they're right now just kind of traveling to where everyone's at. And once they get there, each character gets its own little introduction and you quickly realize like each person is kind of stagnant in some way in their life. Like they are very much past their glory days. It's kind of like the vibe you get from each character for their own reasons. One, they're all happy to see each other because obviously they're all very close at one point. And in general, kind of excited to have this, or appears to have this journey and mission together again. I've so far met four of the five members and it's like very classic like guild dungeon setup you know you have like the tank character the mage character all those types of things and it's really funny to have the contrast of what they were which is definitely always explained who they are now and it definitely drives home the overall kind of humorous fun vibe I also feel like it's really leaning on a lot of like known fantasy tropes and fantasy plot lines which also makes it a lot of fun like it's very self-aware in what it's doing but it still has like an interesting plot some of the combat I've seen so far is interesting so I do feel like it's kind of walking the line of being like self-aware humorous playful while still kind of having like an interesting fantasy plot too at its heart and that is to find and locate Gabriel's daughter who's run off and created her own mercenary band she basically went to this kingdom which is currently under siege by a huge horde of fantastical monsters led by this Duke of Endland who is a druin so so that is kind of where they're venturing off to. I'm still very much in the gathering all the pieces stage before they actually start doing the questing itself. But again, I'm enjoying the overall vibe and I'm excited because I feel like we're gonna meet the daughter and I feel like I'm gonna really, really like her whenever that eventually is. But it has great characters and I will say like, it feels kind of sitcom-y. So I wouldn't say I'm like super attached to anyone, but everyone is very entertaining if that makes sense. But I'm looking forward to see how this story continues to evolve. I'm hoping there's a bit more characterization to kind of provide more depth behind um, this cast, this crew that we are running with here. But 
all in all, I'm definitely entertained, at least in the beginning, so I'm excited to see how this continues to play out. But I've read 120 pages, and I'm gonna read more, but I did just want to give an update. Bad Girls Club, guess who's getting a bath? <laughs> it's, this, it's Matilda, if you couldn't guess. Got a clean and zoomy pup in the house. Isn't that right, Millie? She's like, I'm chomping. Anyway, good job on your bath. You did great. <laughs> All right, guys, time for the main event. We've been looking forward to this. We're gonna watch the newest episode of WandaVision, episode seven. This show is so good. Or is this episode seven or are we on episode 10? I don't know. The most recent. Six, seven. So we're on seven, okay. But anyway, we have been really loving WandaVision. I love all the references. I love how um, kind of like strange it is, I guess, for the Marvel Universe and just how like artsy it is. I'm really looking forward to this one because we're headed into the mid 2000s. But anyway, we're gonna watch. All right, we just watched the newest WandaVision episode. It's really good. WandaVision is just so good. It's clever and interesting and different for the MCU and I'm just excited to see like more experimental stuff by Marvel on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's really original. It's unlike anything else they've really ever made. And all the pop culture references are just really satisfying and then just like trying to guess and surmise like every little thing, which I feel like is always kind of present in Marvel, which is one of the reasons why it makes it so fun. But this just has this like extra layer of mystery to it because of how unusual it is that just makes it like each episode you want to like dissect i guess yeah it, it feels like you're peeling mike the onion in each case yeah it's a like a, there's a mystery mm -hmm. concept to it and it just makes me excited for all disney plus content like Absolutely. disney plus is just like so good oh, it's so good like do they make bad things i don't know i don't know i've only watched the mandalorian in this but yeah i know <laughs> We really, uh, we're here for Star Wars and MCU at the moment. Yeah. So two, for, two for two. Two They're for two. Good. I'd be zero for two if I was doing it. Yeah, well, it's hard. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was so good. I think we're going to finish up the crown now and order some Cajun food for dinner. We really just want banana pudding. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about WandaVision because that last episode, episode seven, top tier. Our banana pudding place was closed, so we decided to be fancy. In honor of finishing up the crown, a meal Her Royal Majesty would approve of. We have officially caught up on the crown. So now we are watching Attack on Titan. So it's finally happening. I feel like we're like the last people in the world to watch this show, but we're finally doing it. All right, anime has been consumed and I'm gonna jump back into the Kings of the Wild and just read as much as I can tonight. I'm actually hoping to finish this book this weekend, so wish me luck <laughs> but I am gonna try to cross the 200 page mark before I call it an evening go to bed so I'm gonna read this and I will probably check in with you guys in the morning good morning world I'm here with my cup of coffee I've just been spending the morning editing this video I'm gonna read it's Sunday hello it's me and I'm looking rough but I finished editing that video and then I sat down to do a bit of reading and I'm gonna continue to read and then I'll get dressed for the day but I wanted to quickly say I passed the 200 page mark of the Kings of the Wild and I'm continuing to really enjoy this not only is it just a really fun laugh out loud funny quest based story with a really imaginative and well thought out fantasy setting I love watching these characters kind of move from place to place not only encounter it present day but also kind of have this funny dialogue of what it was like back in the day an aspect of the story that I'm happy to report is that the characters are definitely growing on me. I've always really liked them. They've always been entertaining, but I wasn't sure if they would be able to kind of move past the sort of like caricature of themselves in that way. I thought they'd be kind of characters that I would enjoy watching, doing whatever it was they were doing, but I would never feel like super connected to them or their like hopes and dreams. But as we kind of continue to get to know them and kind of see more about their path, they do kind of begin to grow on you, which is what I'm kind of feeling now, which I really appreciate. But overall their bond and kind of seeing and learning more about their lives after they decided to be in a band and also kind of what it's taking to bring them back together, I do think provides a lot of character and a lot of heart within this tale. But I do plan to read more of that today, but I have read 200 pages, but now I'm going to read a short story in the Office of Historical Corrections. I've already read two short stories within this collection and I've loved both of them. 
Um, the author's writing is exceptional within this and I would say her ability to create complicated and nuanced characters in not a lot of space and time is just kind of really blowing me away. Um, I obviously haven't finished this yet, but um, I will say of the stories I've read, they've just been so good. It's incredibly human individuals confronting either big or small moments in their life that have a huge lasting impact and also kind of toying with this idea of change and overcoming expectation and history. But I do know in this short story collection, Daniel Evans is basically using history and kind of discussing who is allowed to confront history, who gets to ignore it for their own benefit and to the harm of other people, as well as what is the cost of setting the record straight. So history is a big component throughout this entire book and it's present in both stories I've read at least in small ways but I do know throughout this entire collection like that's kind of a consistent theme so I'm gonna sit now and read um, one of those short stories I believe it's about 30 pages so after I've done with that I'll have read about 230 pages but I did want to quickly just kind of give some thoughts and feelings about this collection because I am really liking it once I read this I'm gonna get dressed but not quite yet <laughs> my washing machine's done hi I still look a mess but I wanted to pop in because I just finished the third short story within this collection boys go to Jupiter and it was incredible so far my favorite of the of the collection I've read so far I've loved all of them and really I would highly recommend picking this collection up because each one has just been a knockout but boys go to Jupiter has so far has been my favorite I mean it packed so much and not very many pages and I feel like it's one that I'm gonna reread again and again but one, it humanizes the white main character of the story in such a fascinating of ways by Daniel Evans, but I also feel like the story touches on racial politics on a college campus, as well as just like actions that maybe had no ill intent at the time can still lead to extreme violence or extreme outcomes. And it's just like, just because you didn't mean anything by it doesn't mean it can't have drastic and terrible consequences or it doesn't impact people greatly. So I feel like this story touches on that quite a bit um, and I'm really looking forward to reading more stories within this collection and ultimately getting to the novella at the end but just wanted to touch on this as I have now read about a third of this and would highly recommend it at this point. But now I'm going to take a step away from reading and get dressed, maybe make some lunch, but I've really spent a nice little morning reading quite a bit so that makes me happy. But yeah, just wanted to do one final reading check-in for this early morning time. <laughs> Getting bangs, this thing has become even increasingly more important. It also kind of does look a little bit of a bang curl for me. Like that no heat, I just like wrap it around. Hope for the best, you know? <laughs> anyway, I'm finally doing my skincare even though it's like noon. Hello, I got dressed in one of my favorite outfits, turtlenecks for life, but I just put sunscreen on, so I'm really ready to face the day, finally. <laughs> Isn't that right, Matilda? My sunshine? Queen. Mini. Oh. <laughs> Threw a record on, and uh, I'm starting breakfast. So I'm just gonna make some eggs, bacon, just like a classic, delicious Sunday breakfast situation. I also have like a tube of cinnamon rolls in the fridge, so I'll probably make those later. Just eat all day and then I'm making a tasty soup for dinner too. So that's the plan, folks. Oven bacon also saves so much time, so much mess. Cook bacon at 350 for 20 minutes. Change your life. It's all coming together, folks. Bon appetit. I broke a yolk, covered the bacon, but it's gonna be so good. Straight lounging <laughs> by the laundry that's drying in the sun. Hi friends, so lunch consumed, video edited, I've gotten a good amount of reading done, so that means afternoon cup of coffee and I'm gonna watch my K-drama. So I'm still watching Touch Your Heart, which I feel like I've mentioned previously, but I'm on the last three episodes love it so much. I was literally sobbing my eyes out watching it yesterday, so I really I just want to see how it ends. I've also, so proud of this, convinced Chanel to watch it. She's watched the first episode, and I'm just like checking my DMs as she goes along, because I just want her to like it as much as me. 
but I love this drama. I honestly feel like I'm going to give it a really high rating um, TBD, but like I'm obsessed. So I'm gonna probably finish this today. Uh, watch the last three hours of this. Clay has to do a bit of work today, so I'm kind of flying solo. So dramas and reading on this Sunday and cooking and just relaxing. Um, so that's my plan, but I just wanted to let you know what was up. Time for me to watch Touch Your Heart. Oh, my heart. Hello, it's me. I've been crying watching K-dramas for two hours, so I thought the only logical way to soothe my soul is with cinnamon rolls, and I promise to not forget about these and burn them to a crisp like my last comfort dessert. So, wish me luck. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cinnamon roll cam. I finished my K-drama, and it was so cute. I watched it on Vicky, but I also think it's actually on Netflix. Seriously, five out of five stars. Matilda and I just love everyone on the show so much it's just it was so cute it was so cute now i need to go do the laundry over there i need to put that away back to reality there's clay he's also sad the k drama's over he was really invested in the story jk uh but anyway i don't know what i'm gonna do tonight i need to read maybe start a new drama i don't know but first laundry all right, hello, I'm in pajamas and I'm gonna start making dinner. I'm actually making one of my favorite, favorite recipes tonight. It is Half-Bake Harvest's, I'm scrolling to the top, um, Instant Pot Pesto Zuppa Toscana. You can make it not in an Instant Pot, um, but it's really good and really fast, kind of tell. It's like a spicy Italian sausage potato soup. So good, perfect for winter, so. I'm gonna make this and then we'll have it for dinner tomorrow, maybe lunch. There's always a lot of leftovers, which also makes it a killer meal. So I'm gonna get to chopping, getting all my ingredients together, and then I'll get the Instant Pot, that guy, off, off of there and get cooking. now I'm officially starting the assembly process this goes in separate onions but first I'm sauteing some bacon in this thing I love my instant pot I don't use it as much as I would like um, but I want to use it more I also really want an air fryer but I don't have anywhere to put it so <laughs> that's a dream for another day basically <laughs> all right making progress I sauteed bacon and now I'm just quickly sauteing the spicy Italian sausage and onions before I combine all the soup things right in here. Pausing Rit Momney, but I've officially combined everything. Basically it's just chicken broth and pesto and vegetables and everything. So I'm now going to uh, do the honors, which is pressure cook it. I'm always afraid like, I've done this so many times, but every time I'm still like, is it going to explode? <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna pressure cook it now and we'll check in, throw in the kale, the Parmesan, the cream, and then consume. After it pressure cooks, it's just about combining the last few items, which is cheese, cream, and kale. You know, gotta get those vegetables in. So let this cook and combine until basically the kale is cooked and then it's ready to eat this recipe is so good i'll definitely link it down below i would definitely recommend making it um i don't know it just always tastes delicious so huzzah also happy to report while that was pressurizing and cooking i was actually able to read oof, an additional 50 pages of kings of the wild which means i've just read under 300 pages so far for this reading vlog I'm gonna read more tonight uh, before bed, which is generally when I get most of my reading done, but I feel a bit like a broken record about this book. I'm really just enjoying like the classic adventure-ness of the story and just kind of how, I feel it's kind of like a love song to fantasy in some ways. It's a really fun quest sort of guild focused fantasy story and 
I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like blowing my mind in any way. Like so far, none of the plot twists or kind of character arcs have blown me out of the water in a way like maybe I've read with Robin Ha, but in terms of having a really good time, I would say I'm definitely having a really good time reading this and it's definitely sort of put a smile on my face and it's just been really, really entertaining. So 250 pages of this bread, I'm gonna read more. I would love to finish this, if not get very close to finishing it, but I'll keep you guys posted. All right, I'm eating my soup and I think I'm gonna start Mr. Queen. I don't know really what I wanna watch because I love Touch Your Heart so much, but I think this is mostly a comedy, so I feel like it might be a good change up. Touch Your Heart's a comedy too, but like in a different way. It's like historical drama, like a guy gets transported back to the Joseon era and becomes a queen. Sounds interesting, so we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> Hi, so I look disheveled, but I turned off TV, I finished dinner, soup was delicious as it usually is, and I have been reading actually. Um, and I'm happy to say I actually read another short story in the Office of Historical Corrections. Continues to just knock my socks off. This collection of short stories slash novella, I haven't read the novella yet, but amazing. Like I could not recommend this more. Please, please check this out. Um, so far, <laughs> the four short stories I've read have absolutely just been knockouts. So, um, but that does mean I have read officially over 300 pages. So I am going to now shift my attention to reading Kings of the Wild. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the evening. Um, I'm going to sit down and hopefully just try to get as far into this as I possibly can. Again, cutting out distractions. I'm focused. I like when I swoop my bangs. Throw me back to my mid early 2000s life with my with my intense side part. It's a vibe. Justin Bieber vibes. Anyway, um, I'm gonna read now. Hi, so I've been reading. I've officially passed the 300 page mark of this book, which means I've almost read 400 pages. So I'm on track to get, you know, a decent amount read at least, but um, I feel a bit like a broken record, but I do have a few new things to say. One, I feel like I've been focusing a lot on kind of this this band of men coming back together for like one last hurrah, one last adventure, at least I think. I'm sure there's gonna be more adventure. And obviously they're definitely the main characters. And one, I do appreciate, there's a big range of backstories and personalities and they all kind of riff off each other really, really well. But outside of those central five characters, I do feel like this world has, you know, a lot of really fun, um, kind of side characters that pop in and out. Again, I would say everyone kind of feels like a caricature, like they're kind of fitting stereotypes and roles that you run into in fantasy, but I also feel like this book is trying to be playful in that way. So I still find when they're present, either entertaining or funny or like a good villain, um, they're definitely serving their purpose in a way that I like. And I will say like the character development continues to be there. Um, and I do feel like we're getting a bit more um kind of dynamic backgrounds with some of the more main characters um combat is interesting so far again because there is such a broad range of fantastical creatures that we run into in this series there's no lack of action and because all of our characters have like different strengths and battle tactics there's a wide range of combat we also get to experience which is a lot of fun um the quest is definitely ongoing there's been a variety of obstacles that they've run into along the way and i do feel like the author is able to kind of balance like dark bloody combat with humor and funny dialogue and funny even moments which i appreciate conveniently i guess you could say um there is obviously a central villain and kind of central conflict and the reason why our band of guys are going to this place to begin with is obviously to save gabe's daughter rose but conveniently again the location of where rose is at is also like this huge battle site of this horde of monsters that have been gathering together underneath this one powerful individual. And I definitely feel like there's going to, I think, be a larger conversation about uh, like human and monster relations and like history of conflict and probably misunderstanding and also just mistreatment between these two groups of people. I'm not sure. It's kind of unclear. It's been kind of hinted at because while there are definitely monsters that are kind of like animals, there are a lot of monsters that are just like, you know, humans, but you know, just another species. Um, and obviously humans have been mistreating them for a very long time. The evolution of these like mercenary crews that were monster hunters has evolved into kind of more arena fighting, which is interesting. And the continual mistreatment of these monsters 
um, persists to this day. And I feel like there's more to be discovered in this book and in this world in terms of the motivations of the monsters in this world. And obviously I feel like this sort of complicated relationship between humans and monsters will continue to evolve. So rambly thoughts and feelings updated clip is over. I just wanted to give kind of a more comprehensive view of where I am right now. Still having a lot of fun. Um, still kind of surface level in terms of like characterization, but I don't really mind it so much. I feel like this would be like a great video game and or a movie. Like I feel like this would translate really well to screen. Um, but I'm gonna keep reading. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to the 400 page mark before I, I inevitably fall asleep, but I wanted to do a bit of a reading check-in. Hi. It's very late but I passed the 350 page mark. I'm gonna try to read like 20 more pages and then I'll wrap her up tomorrow morning. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this, but I got pretty close, which is, which is good, but I'm too tired to put together sentences right now. So I'm just gonna read those last 20 pages and then go to sleep. Hello friends and welcome to the end of the vlog the next day. I just wanted to pop in and quickly wrap up everything I was able to read this past weekend. Um, and one, I am happy to report that I was able to read to page 370 of this book last night. So about 120 pages of this book left. And I will say the more and more I think about it, I am like feeling very middle about this book. I went in wanting to love it. It's very, very popular. But while I find it funny and has a lot of humor and great banter and the adventure itself is fun, I do think the plot is a little convenient and a little surface and a lot of the characters still remain a bit two-dimensional to me. Granted, I have 120 pages left, so there's still technically time to change my mind, but I just wanted to shout that out. I would definitely still recommend it. It's a lot of fun. I know a lot of people love this book, so I think it's worth picking up, but just wanted to shout some of my thoughts and feelings. Opposite, I am loving The Office of Historical Corrections, which I was also able to read 60 pages of and two stories of this past weekend. This is totally blowing me away and knocking my socks off, so would highly, highly recommend picking this up if you haven't already, because it's so good. But all in all, I am really happy with everything I was able to read this vlog. I was able to read math 440 pages. I think. <laughs> no, 430 pages, I think, um, which I'm pleased with. I definitely am excited. I finally was able to tackle these off my TBR as well. Again, big shout out to this video sponsor, which is ThreadUp. Be sure to use my code Reagan to save 30% off at checkout. And I'll have all of that information linked down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.